But uh, I want to ask you, so you get traded over to the Pacers in the Brad Miller sign and trade deal. You mentioned that you were expecting, you were hoping to start and maybe be an all-star and then you had the injury issues. Now, R- Reggie Miller, I'll give you something other than Malice in the Palace and maybe we'll get into that if you, if there's, if it comes up, if you want to say anything about it, we can, but I'll give you something else. Reggie Miller goes on Dan Patrick show a lot. I hear a lot of Reggie's thoughts. He's been a very prominent voice in the NBA for a long time. He will take it to his grave that your Pacers team would have beaten the Lakers in the 04 finals. Do you feel that's the case? 100%. We, and, and I think that the part of the reason he feels so strongly about that is he feels like the loss to Detroit was on him. Uh, he, he had a chance to dunk a ball and he laid it up and, Tayshaun Prince came and blocked it, and that forced game six. We could have taken a 3-1 lead, I believe, or maybe that closed it out. I can't remember. But it was, a, it was an instrumental play, and, and Reggie, uh, at the time, him and I were pretty close. We used to go to dinner on the road and talk a lot because we were the older guys on the team, and uh, we didn't go out. <laughs> and so, uh, But I know he took that really hard, uh, and then – yeah, because Detroit ended up winning it, uh, and then the next fall happened. That's why the next fall happened. Rick Carlisle was the coach of the Detroit Pistons before they won the championship. He felt like he got his career there cut short, and that he that was his team. Like, he built that team, and then they win a championship, and then they come here, and they beat us here and win the championship against the Lakers, or whoever it was that year. And so the next fall... In the fall of 2004, we're playing them. We're playing the returning world champions. And, the, and Rick Carlisle wanted to send a message because we were better. We were still better. And we got Steven Jackson, which made us even better. And we, he wanted to send a message. There was no reason to have starters in the game that late. It was the only reason was to send a message, to try to beat them so badly. The game was out of hand. There was no reason Ron Artest and Ben Ben Wallace should have been in the game. If they weren't, if they had just put in subs, like you do in every other NBA game to save your starters, you put in subs in a game that's out of hand, the brawl doesn't happen. I'm not putting it on Rick Carlisle completely, but both coaches could have said, hey, let's tap the brakes. It's over. I'll take mine out if you take yours out. And the brawl never happens. And what, what, what could have, would have been had that night not happened? And that's the part that I, that I, I hate because the reactions of everybody, while I don't think they're justifiable, I think they're understandable. I don't think you can turn yourself into a victim because you ran up into the stands and started attacking normal sized people just because they threw something at you. I don't, I don't, I abhor violence. I cannot stand that people think, oh, I'm just going to put my fists up and start hitting people for no reason. You didn't attack me, I'm not attacking you. I'll defend myself, but nobody attacked me. So I didn't have to defend myself. Thank God, I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to hit anybody that came onto the court. Everybody that came on the court was a normal sized human. And to my comment earlier in the podcast, this is the point, this is what I saw from every fan that came onto the court because we're bigger in real life. And they didn't want a piece of that. Nobody does. They think, oh, yeah, I'm going to go down there and beer muscles. And all of a sudden, they get in person. It's like, oh, you're literally twice my size. Good. And that was the reaction to everybody. And still, they got hit by giants. So that's the part that I, I, I hate that all of that happened as a result of something that should have happened that didn't, which is subs go in, stars go out. Pacers still win. But the game ends in a normal fashion. And there's no worst fight in NBA history. So last thing on the malice of the palace, we'll move on. We won't do too much on this, but I'm curious. Cause I know you didn't play in that game, right? You were, you were sitting on the bench yeah. and you, you were injured at the time, right? Yeah. My back. So what was your, when all this was going on, what was your role? What were you trying to do? Were you trying to, were there certain guys you were trying to get and pull out? What were you doing? Uh, early on, <clears throat> I'm just trying to stay in the bench area because I had been involved and I won't go in too far into detail, but I had been involved in a big fight between the Kings and the Lakers where the bench is cleared and went out the tunnel. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. And then there was one in Orlando 
where Bobby Jackson threw a ball at Tracy McGrady with at the other end of the court. And I stepped on the court. I was out of the game. I was playing, but I was out of the game at the time. And I just stepped on the court to get a better view of what was going on. I wasn't rushing over there to join in. I just wanted to see what was going on. And then I realized, oh, yeah, you have to stay off the court. I got fined $5,000 and suspended the next game in Miami because I stepped on the court during an altercation. So I had those, those memories in my mind. Uh, and by the way, the $5,000 fine, that's a lot of money. What people don't realize is the game suspension was 182nd of my pay. That's a big number for me. You know, so that meant that I couldn't go to the game in Miami. I'm sitting in a bar with Vlade Divac. We, we ordered a Corona because we had to sit in a bar in Miami and watch the game. We can't go to the arena. And I ordered a Corona that night, and me and Vlade toasted our Corona and said, man, this is the most expensive beer I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Uh, 5,000 plus 55,000 was what I ended up spending on that Corona because I couldn't play in the next game because I stepped on the court. So to answer your question about the malice in the palace, that's all I'm thinking. I'm not spending my money to go see what's going on in this childish brawl that's going on because somebody ran up into the stands to attack a normal sized human. I'm not spending my money doing anything other than playing basketball or taking care of my family. So I earned it playing basketball. I'm not going to give it away to punch a human. It's just dumb. I left a lot of clubs and a lot of bars throughout my career, throughout my life, because I know that there's always going to be that one drunk person that's going to come up and sucker punch me. Because if I fight back, look at Mike Tyson on the airplane recently. Mike was being good. Mike wasn't doing anything to that guy. And that guy's harassing him in his ear. And you know what? You mess with a bull, you're going to get the horns. And that's the thing. I've left a lot of those scenarios over my life and my career because I'm not going to spend money to punch a human, to embarrass somebody, or to hurt somebody. And I know I can do it because I'm a big, strong guy. And so that was my mentality. First thing, things start going crazy. I'm like, I'm not spending my money on this. I've already spent too much money. $55,000 fine, or $5,000 fine, but one game pay back then. And I was making more money at this time. And so I was like, I'm not spending my money on this. I'm not going to go punch somebody. I'm not going to go on the court at all. And then when they finally called the game, that's when I said, all right, let's go. And I just started shoving people towards the tunnel because they realized they couldn't get the game to finish. There was no way they were going to get the court cleared with players on there and players in the stands. So then it was like, all right, we're going to call the game. And that's when we just started rushing out. And I pushed guys. And then David Harrison, I saw, jump up into the crowd. He grabbed a chair and hit somebody. Uh, and I got beer and popcorn dumped all over me on the way out, threw my suit away, didn't even try to clean that because I didn't want that memory. Um, but yeah, it was, it was uh, a terrible, terrible night. And my mentality was at first, don't spend money. And then when there was no security ever, then it was like, all right, do I really need to start defending myself? Is it, is it, is it a, a situation where my, I'm actually in danger now? And, and again, nobody came up to me. It was, they came up to guys that had their fists like this. That's who they came up to. They didn't come up to me. I'm just standing there. And they're looking at me like, I'm not messing with that guy. And then the next guy's like this and attacks them. Nobody threw a punch at Jermaine O'Neal first. Nobody threw a punch at Ron Artest first. Nobody threw a punch at Steven Jackson first. No one threw a punch at David Harrison first. They were all antagonizers. And that's what I hated about the Netflix special. And I love those guys. I have no problem with them. But I've had a problem with the Netflix special when you're trying to say you were a victim in the situation that you instigated. You started it. Yes, somebody threw something at you. Absolutely. Your reaction was to run up in the stands and try to murder somebody, and you hit the wrong guy first. And then all hell breaks loose. So, yeah, I had a problem with the whole night. Uh, again, I have poor violence. I think there's always a solution that can be done without using resorting to that. Uh, and it has a lot to do with the fact that I was hit and manhandled quite a bit by my giant brothers when I was a little kid. And I know how it feels, and I don't want anybody else to feel that way. So, again, that's, that's my personal reason of why I'm such a pacifist when it comes to that stuff. Uh, because I know what it feels like to get hit and be held against your will, and it's not a good feeling. I don't want to make anybody feel that way. Scott, we've got a little under 15 minutes here. So let's do a lightning round here on the remaining questions. Uh, last thing on the Pacers, Reggie's mentioned that that 
in the during those Eastern Conference Finals in 04, he had talked about how there was a little bit of an identity crisis with the team, where Ron Artest felt like it was his team, Jermaine O'Neal felt like it was his team, Reggie felt like it was his team. Whose team was it? Nobody's. That's the problem. Um, that that is absolutely true, and you know every NBA team has their two best players. Not every NBA team has a superstar. And there's only about five to 10 NBA superstars in the league at any one time. There's never 20. There's never 30. I'm talking about the guy that's going to give you those numbers every single night and can drag a team to be better all by themselves. There's only five to 10 of those in the league at any given time. And right now I'd say it's closer to five than 10. But when you have four guys that all think it's their team, yeah, you're going to have an identity crisis because the problem is you can only have one best player and then you have 1A. You have number one and then you have 1A. 1A thinks he's one, but acknowledges that number one is number one. So he compliments 1A. If 1A thinks he's one, and does not complement one, and then there's two, three, and four that all think they're one, and they don't complement. That's exactly what it is. That's a, and that's every NBA player or every NBA team. It's the failure of role players to recognize that they're role players. And every single player in the NBA, besides those five to ten superstars, is a role player. The guys that learn how that learn how that works early are the ones that last in the league. Because because everybody is a role player. I don't care who you think you are. Once you get to the NBA, if you're not LeBron, you're a role player. If you're not Giannis, you're a role player. If, you know, Maya, if you're not Shaq or Kobe, or you're not Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen was a role player. He's a Hall of Famer, but he was a role player. And he got it. He was 1A. But when he went, it, it went to Houston, he wasn't one. He wasn't even 1A. And that's why it didn't work down there. They had Shiki, uh, they had Hakeem and Charles and Scotty, and they had incredible te- role players around them. But apparently, something didn't work. Uh, maybe it was just their age. But yeah, sorry. I know what you said. Lightning round. Yeah, <laughs> I, it was a tough question. It was a loaded question. 